The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. This past week, I had the privilege of uh, going out to dinner with a, uh, a family. They had just become Catholic, and so we're sitting there at the table. You know, I've got my full Roman clerical stuff on, you know, black, black, a little bit of white. And so their eight-year-old son, he, he just keeps staring at my Roman collar. He's staring at it. And so I said to him, uh, do you know what this means? And he said, he looked kind of puzzled. But he said, no fleas or ticks for three months? <laughs> well, this young boy was a little bit mistaken about his faith. And so sometimes we too can be mistaken about our faith as well. We can think that blessed are the rich, the powerful, and the popular. But our gospel doesn't say that, does it? Our gospel tells us the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, the pure of heart. Blessed are those who mourn, those who are persecuted and insulted. Why? Because this just doesn't make sense to me. Why are we blessed in those situations? And really, the reason why we are blessed in those situations is because we recognize that this world is not perfect, that there, this world is lacking in the fullness of God's presence, the fullness of God's life. And so we recognize that in those situations, we need to be open to God's help, to God's presence in our lives. And the only way we can do this is the way all of the readings spoke about, is to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, that God works through the humble of this world to shame those who have no need for God. You see, the rich, the powerful, the popular, so often they're so full of themselves, they have no room for God, no reason for God. And if they have no room for God in this world, how can they have room for God in the world to come. And so, if we are making it our effort to be humble, to make room for God in this world, then rejoice, because your reward in heaven will be great. Because as great as this world is, it just doesn't fill all of our deepest desires. Only God can fill our deepest desires. Personal story, I was, uh, this was right around the time when I was uh, thinking about leaving the fire department and becoming a priest. And we were on a surf trip down in uh, Mexico, Nine Palms, uh, well overhead, almost double overhead waves, perfect rights, right? Ripping off wave after wave after wave. And I got to tell you, I realized you know, this is the best surf I've ever surfed. And yet, it didn't satisfy my deepest desire. 
Yes, it's made me happy for a while, but I always wanted another wave. I always wanted more, wanted more, because the wave, waves of this world don't satisfy our deepest desires. As St. Augustine would say, our hearts remain restless until they rest in thee, my God. That only God can truly satisfy our deepest needs and desires. And so the Beatitudes really show us the attitude we should have to be happy in this world and in the world to come. The Beatitudes show us how to be imitators of Christ. But to do that, we have to humble ourselves. To do that, we have to die to ourselves, to die to our egos. Because I don't know about you, but who here feels blessed when they're poor, when they're mourning, when they're persecuted and insulted? I don't know about you, but I don't feel very blessed in those situations. Only if you turn to God can we truly feel blessed. Only if we die to ourselves can we truly imitate Christ. Look at Jesus' life. He was always persecuted. He was always insulted. Scribes, Pharisees, King Herod, everyone always persecuting him. And yet, he was always filled with joy. So much joy, so much happiness that he was healing all the people that were around him. He was bringing new life to all these people. Why? Because he walked humbly. And when we walk humbly, God will lift us up. We look at the cross of Jesus Christ. The greatest example, Jesus being persecuted, killed, murdered, hung on a cross, humbled himself and went to the cross. And yet God lifted him up unto resurrection, unto eternal life. And so it's our promise from God that we too, if we humble ourselves, God will lift us up. God will fill that void in our hearts so that we can become saints. Look at all the saints, all the saints. One thing in common, they were all humble people. They walked humbly before the Lord their God. And so we too are called to be saints in the making. And so we too must strive to humble ourselves. As I often say, we have to die to our egos. Ego, E-G-O, edging God out. We have to die to our ego. And like the Beatitudes say, we must choose not to edge God out, but to let God in. In the darkest of our moments, to let God in. To let it go and give it to Jesus. You see, none of us can completely control what happens to us in this life. The only thing we can really control is how we choose to respond to the things that happen in our lives. What our attitude will be. So all of us are called to strive to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord our God. And God gives us the tools, the confessional, right? On a regular basis, the sacrament of confession. We recognize the sin in our lives. We humble ourselves. Examinate, doing a daily examination of conscience. We humble ourselves to see where we could have done better, to see where God has been in our lives. Any uh, husbands here brave? You want a tool to help you to be humble? Ask your wife how you're doing. <laughs> right? Moms, ask your children how you're doing. They will help us to be humble. All these relationships, they help us to be humble in this world so that we too may attain eternal life and rejoice and be glad. And so we all have work to do to become more humble. It's an ongoing process. So today Jesus told us about his Beatitudes, how to be humble, the situations we face, the Beatitudes of Christ. As I've said before, we also know that the devil has his own Beatitudes, right? 
You guys have heard of the devil's beatitudes? No? Here you go. This is from the devil. Blessed are those who are too tired, too busy, too distracted to spend an hour once a week attending Sunday Mass. They're my best workers. Blessed are those who are always critical of the church and refuse to help their parish home to make things better. I can use them in my business. Blessed are those who are lazy and fail to care for those in need. Soon they'll stop going to church. Truly, they shall soon be my best missionaries. And blessed are those who sow hatred, petty jealousies, and division. They're my beloved children. And blessed are those who have no time to pray, for they are my prey. Let me repeat that. Blessed are those who have no time to pray, for they are my prey. Blessed are those who gossip and spread rumors, for they are my secret agents. And blessed are you when you read this and think it has everything to do with other people and has nothing to do with you. I've got room for you in my prison. See, the devil's beatitudes are all about fulfilling our selfish needs and desires and failing to consider the good of the other. The devil's ways will never truly satisfy our souls. Only in Christ Jesus can we be truly happy and satisfied. And so the question for all of us is, whose beatitudes are we following? Blessed are you, when you humble yourself and seek God's ways instead of our own way. Amen.